I've got a question for you. What was it that socialists used before candles? Electric light bulbs. This is a picture from space of South Korea, China, and North Korea. So this is a truly socialist society. I have been to China, and believe me, when it comes to just general businesses, there is no resemblance to a socialist society. The, 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 they're not communist, not true communist. They do not, the government does not own the means of production. It does not own businesses. It no longer assigns housing. It no, it, you know, private property is legal again. This is not, I don't know what to call it. It's sort of like a one-party semi-dictatorship ca uh, capitalist society. It's very strange uh, way of melding all of these things. Uh, but the point here is that this is a socialist society. And, you know, I did a video on uh, the uh, act that was introduced in the Senate by three senators, uh, the Make Billionaires Pay Act. And in there, uh, I talked about Elon Musk and stuff. But the, the point here is that uh, there are billionaires here, several of them, quite a few. There are lots and lots of billionaires here. The only, there might be one person that lives like a billionaire here, and that is Kim Jong-un, the guy that gets to uh, tell everybody in that country uh, what they're going to do, where they're going to live, how much they're going to make. You know, he's the one that uh, gets to make the decisions, and he lives like a king. So there might be somebody that lives like a billionaire by impoverishing everybody else. And that happens every time true socialism or communism uh, comes into practice. If you look at Maduro in uh, Venezuela right now, that's exactly what's happening. But I talked about Elon Musk. You know, Elon Musk, little boy, uh, grows up in, in South Africa from, in a middle-class family, moves to uh, Canada to go to school, uh, comes to the United States and moves to the Bay Area, uh, Silicon Valley, gets a office, uh, sleeps in the office at night, showers, you know, to save uh, cash. He sleeps in the office at night, showers at the YMCA, and codes all day and night to develop a program. Uh, and, you know, so working 14, 16, 18 hours a day, he ended up developing something that became PayPal. When they sold it, his take was $120 million from that. Then, instead of retiring and buying a private island or something, he gambles 90% of his own net worth on uh, trying to colonize Mars because he sees the possibility of human extinction from like an asteroid strike or climate change or something like that on Earth. So he thinks we need a backup plan, colonizing Mars. And then the other thing was Tesla, which is to trying to uh, transition the world to sustainable energy. Accelerating the advent of, a, of sustainable energy is the, the, so those are the two goals. Colonize Mars, sustainable energy, and he gambled 90% of his net worth on it. So to all of the naysayers and the people that hate Elon Musk and Tesla and so on, I would like to say pick the largest thing you can, figure, you can think of that threatens humanity, climate change, uh, uh, sustainable farming practices, and then gamble 90% of your net worth on it. Um, so, the point of this uh, is that, uh, you know, that tax the bill billionaires, uh, uh, make them pay their fair share uh, thing. Uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, AOC, says, billionaires need the working class. The working class does not need billionaires. She also believes in modern monetary theory. Modern monetary theory uh, is the theory that uh, since we have our own sovereign currency uh, in the United States, we can just uh, print as much of, we, uh, of it as we need, and we can uh, spend this on anything we want to spend it on. So the government can just print and print and print and spend it on whatever it, it wants to spend it on. Well, there's a review here, uh, and I highly recommend just doing a search for uh, this article and reading it. And <clears throat> Stephanie Kelton is an economist who wrote a book recently. And uh, 
her ideas are making a huge splash in wor the world of economic thinking. Uh, she currently serves as professor at Stony Brook University, but more notably, no notably served as the chief economist on the state budget committee. And that explains a, a lot. Senate budget committee, I'm sorry. Senate budget committee. So this explains a lot of why the U.S. is in such deep doo-doo, uh, as well as a senior economic, economic advisor to the Bernie Sanders presidential campaign. Uh, this background should give you some insight into her latest book, The Deficit Myth, Modern Monetary Theory, and the Birth of the People's Economy. Now, I, I don't know. I, I'm going to probably have to read this book so that I fully understand all of the theories behind it because I only have a cursory knowledge from the articles that I've read about it. And most of the articles that I've read about it is, are written by somebody that comes at it from an Austrian school perspective of being conservative, having a fixed currency supply. You've got to be careful with what you do economically because there could be unintended consequences that are big. And so um, I would suggest reading this article, maybe even getting this book, but read it. You know, if you're not capable of critical analytical thought, don't read the book because it is well written and serves as an accessible insight into the world of modern monetary theory. So it can be very convincing for somebody that can't see through it. Uh, but so although this guy had many objections. He found it a great read nonetheless. Uh, but um, as a contribu contribution to economic thought, he found it rather questionable. Uh, it also features circular logic as well as bait and switch style arguments. An accessible insight into an increasingly relevant monetary theory and the world of public finance, I believe the book does just that. I think he's referring to it gives this insight into relevant monetary theory and the world of public finance through circular logic and bait and switch. <laughs> so um, uh, read that. But you know, this was all tried years ago. I mean, 300 years ago to this year, exactly 300 years ago, there was a cataclysmic uh, 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 end to basically a better form of modern monetary theory that was also uh, connected with um, trade and, uh, and it was called John Law's Mississippi Scheme. And uh, in 1716, uh, he got a bank and they did this experiment issuing paper currency and the government was able to pay back its debts. They were able to run the government off of just printing currency. But he also coupled the value of the currency to a new company, the Mississippi Company. They thought that there was gold in, in the Louisiana, you know, the territory that France owned was uh, the Louisiana Purchase in the United States. That was about one third of the current United States went from Mississippi, from Louisiana, the port of the, you know, Thomas Jefferson only wanted the uh, uh, New Orleans port so that we would have access to the Mississippi which it was all of the supply for all the goods and so on that were being uh, imported uh, into the western half of the United States then because it ended pretty much at the Mississippi. So that was the trade route. That's what uh, Thomas Jefferson wanted. And uh, Napoleon was involved in some wars and needed a bunch of cash. So uh, he threw in the rest of the Louisiana Purchase, not just the Port of New Orleans, but one third of the United, current United States uh, for an extra million dollars in gold. Uh, so one third of the United States. And this, this went on for four years and ended in a catastrophic hyperinflation that plunged all of Europe into a depression that would last decades. Uh, and so this was the first attempt at modern monetary theory. My suggestion is if you have critical thinking and can look at things with a discerning eye and identify circular logic or identify bait and switch where it's, uh, there's a political, you know, they're going to prove something and then they just make a political statement as their conclusion, then read this book. If you can't do your own thinking, stay away from it because you're going to be convinced that this 
uh, magical money tree, MMT, theory might work. Uh, and here's one last meme uh, to show you what mon modern monetary theory is. Today's special, buy one beer for the price of two and receive the second beer absolutely free. <laughs> You can't give away currency without it devaluing the currency. I'm sorry, it just doesn't work. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time.